So you just received your new SICE fuel senders. What do you do now? Hello, I'm Daniel from SICE Incorporated. We are the world leader in fuel quantity senders. In this video, I will provide tips for your first installation of our fuel senders. This video will be applicable to certified installations as well as experimental. These beautifully machined aluminum fuel senders have a lot of upgraded technology packed into the same form factor as the old units you are replacing. There will be a few notable differences. Don't let this scare you. As long as you follow the instructions, you will have a great installation and the aircraft will actually have fuel level accuracy. Let's start with the box that your new senders came in. Affixed to the outside of this box will be a packing slip. At the bottom of this slip is a certificate of conformance. This document will be necessary for your records. Make note of the number on the top of this page. Any troubleshooting down the line may need this. Use this moment to take a look at the actual box. Does it look like an accordion? If it does, don't panic just yet. Go ahead and open the box to see if the units are damaged. Our products are quite robust, however, there is a chance that the shipping service mishandled them. Inside your box, you will first notice a piece of paper with a stop sign on it. This video should cover most of the information on this sheet, but it's worth a look. This document also outlines where to find installation instructions and certification paperwork. Under the packaging will be your units packaged along with our standard gaskets, if they're needed for your application. Quick side note on our gaskets. Do not use any lubricants on the gaskets. They have been engineered to be installed dry and these lubricants will actually hinder the seal and may cause leaks. Unpackage all of the units and paperwork and verify that the part numbers and serial numbers match the paperwork. In certain applications, your box will include extra hardware. However, this is not typical. Your box will not include any harnesses or wire to connect your, to your fuel quantity instrument. Procurement of these items is a responsibility of the installer. We do not include installation manuals or certification paperwork, as those can easily be downloaded from our website under the New Installs General Installations tab. At this point, you have your senders. You know which gauge you're interfacing to. You may even have the old ones pulled out. While it may be tempting to simply install the senders in accordance to the installation manual you downloaded, there is one more step that saves everyone involved time and energy. Most repair stations have some form of power supply that can output 9 to 28 volts DC. If this is not an option, you will need a spare battery, anything that can supply 9 to 28 volts DC. First connect the black wire to the negative of the supply. Next, connect the red wire to the positive of the supply. After these connections are made, you are ready to test. Pull out your multimeter and connect the black lead to the same point that you connected our black wire to. Then connect the red lead from the multimeter to the blue wire of the sender. The first test is the DC voltage from our blue wire. This reading should fall somewhere between 2.3 and 2.7 volts DC. You get this reading because the blue wire is outputting a 0 to 5 volt square wave. Your multimeter will pick up the average of the signal wave oscillation. This test confirms that the sender is functioning. Now we can make sure that the unit is functioning properly. We need to set the multimeter to read hertz. While keeping the red lead from your multimeter on the blue wire, we are looking for a change in hertz. We, we see this change when the arm is moved. Here are the generic ranges expected for each of our standard configurations. If your unit falls outside these ranges, give SICE a call to discuss this. But what if you have other wires installed? If you have a gray wire or an orange and red striped wire, you can test these by powering a secondary unit and connecting it to one of these wires. While the blue wire from your primary is still connected to the multimeter and the secondary sender is powered, connect the blue from the secondary to either the gray or orange and red striped wire. The hertz signal should be nearly cut in half and should change with movement from either sender. 
If you have a green wire installed on your unit, it means your senders were configured for a gauge that requires a voltage signal. The blue and gray wire on your unit are still functional, but you have one more test to do. With the sender powered, connect your multimeter to the green wire just as you did for the blue wire, except now you are testing the DC voltage change. The complete output of this wire is 0 to 10 volts DC. We configure this output based on the profile required by the fuel quantity instrument you selected when you ordered. Before you install the fuel senders, it is also important to note the configuration of our units. Some senders are mounted on the side of the tank. Some are mounted on the top or the bottom of the tank. If you install our side-mounted configuration into the top of a tank, you may be able to calibrate it, but the float can get stuck on the bottom and cause erroneous readings. If you were to install a sender configured for top mount into a side mount application, the float arm wouldn't reach the bottom of the tank. When installing your new units, also verify that there are no obstructions in the travel of the sender arm. A visual inspection of the mounting location should be sufficient. Once you are sure that the sender will travel its full range, you can place the sender into the location. As I mentioned in the previous FAQ video linked above, the placard is not an indication of mounting direction. Your new units will only mount in one way. This is in accordance to the bolt pattern from your original senders. Align the holes and ensure that the sender is fully seated before adding the mounting bolts. Finally, torque the bolts to the proper spec, 18 to 22 inch pounds, using a star pattern. If you skip any of these steps, an improper calibration may result. Our general installation manual can be downloaded from our website. Following this manual is a requirement of our STC. Please take the time to browse this document for answers to specific questions. The manual outlines installation of our senders and has some tips on calibration. However, the manual for specific fuel quantity instrument will be re your resource for most calibration and interface questions. I have kept this video short and to the point. The SICE technical support team is a phone call away. But as long as you follow the installation manual and you don't rush through the steps included, you should not need to reach out. If you have found this video helpful, please leave a like. And be sure to subscribe for more helpful information in the future. Thank you.